All right, so the focus session on amplitude, we're going to look at amplitude of releases and dismount, separating good from great and what's possible. Uh, you see the little traffic sign, you can see a lot of those. Uh, I have that as anything in the green area would be no deduction. You're good to go. And we're talking strictly amplitude. Anything in the yellow would be a 0.05 to 0.1. Anything in the red would be 0.15 to 0.2. So we're going to take a simple skill like the bail. And we see a lot of those now because they're connected right after a release element. And the value of this B skill now goes to a C when it's directly connected to a D or E release. According to this wording, it says must show good flight distance between the hips and the bar. Catch an extended position from shoulders to feet at horizontal or above, but no amplitude deduction. And I think we sometimes forget that because it happens so quickly and it's, it's a tough skill, tough little combination after release, but we still have to expect the amplitude on that release. And of course, our famous sit-ups, whether they're done from soul circle, from stalter, or from clear hip. Here's my uh, my little sight. High bar is the mark. We want our hips to be at the high bar when the rotation starts forward for the counter rotation. So if you're green, there's no deduction for amplitude. If you're in yellow, 0 0.5 to 0.1. And if you're red, 0.15 to 0.2. You want to look not only at the amplitude here, but also for lack of rotation forward. So as they get up there, you need to have that rotation forward so the body can extend fully through the swing out. And here's a pack salt, hang on high bar, facing low bar, swing forward and salto backwards, stretched <laughs> between bars to a clear support. Mm -hmm. And that's the key word there is a clear support with regular or cross grip on low bar D skill. So your hips should be at the height of the high bar for no deduction. Okay. Anything below that, you know, you're going to start getting deductions up to two. Looking for the hips to rise, I think is the most important thing. It is a salto. A salto should rise. Don't get so wound up on where the hips were exactly, but look for the hips to be rising up to that high bar. Uh, of the high bar. You'll see some really nice examples uh, coming up a little bit in just a minute. Okay, so the amplitude zone for Gingers and Jaegers and Delchefs. So the hips are above the high bar, above. There's no deduction. Hips at the height of the bar is 0.05 and hips below the bar 0.1 to 0.2. Once again, here's a skill that you also want to look for under rotation. When they catch your hips and legs, they stand fully backwards positioning and after catching the bar, so they have a nice long swing forward. Amplitude zone for the rays, the Hindors, the Rickners, and the Takachefs. Well, as you can imagine, if you're in that red zone, your butt's very close to that bar somewhere, and it's uh, you're going to be taking a pretty hefty deduction. A little bit higher, 0 0.05, and you're up there, green zone, no deduction for that. Once again, we have a lack of rotation on the other side. So make sure you're looking at, at those things also. On the Shaposhnikovas and the Maloney's, uh, you have two areas that you really have to focus on. You have to focus on the release point from low bar to high bar for amplitude, but you also have an amplitude deduction on the back of up to one for lack of backswing. So here's our two little red lights. Quite often you see them pike immediately after the release, which makes their hips drop. It's not a flight. And, you know, it's, it says inner support on low bar, clear hip circle through handstand with flight to hang on high bar. And the same thing for the Maloney. It has sole circle backward through handstand with flight to hang on the high bar. So think about that. There must be nice visible flight there. On the backswing, it hits a horizontal, no deduction, anything less than that. You have up to one-tenth one deduction. Now here's my favorite area is dismounts, but you know, you know, we've gotten so focused on, on landings that I think sometimes we miss what actually happened in the dismount. So you really want to look at these dismounts and whether it's a toe front, a double lay, full in, whatever you want to do. Uh, some of the dismounts may have a different trajectory uh, as far as where there are in regards to the high bar, but they all should be above the height of the high bar. So kind of keep that in mind, anything above the high bar, no deduction, anything right at the high bar and below, small deduction, 05 to one, anything lower than that, two to three. Okay, so uh, we're gonna take time to look at some video clips of these releases and dismounts pertains to amplitude. Now, all these skills were attracted from the 
actually 16 routines that we said uh, were sent out, like Cookie explained to the national judges. Uh, eight of these routines will also be used for our practice judging sessions. So you'll probably see some of these same skills in the actual routines. Uh, I tried best as possible to give examples of okay, good, great. Some skills only had one or two examples, but they were pretty decent examples, so I, I included them in there. As we go through these on the videos, uh, just think about where on the traffic line would they be in regards to amplitude? Would they be green, no deduction, yellow, small, or big, red? Okay, so we're going to go some single bar releases now. And this first example will show you two reverse hex, two Takachevs. You really can see a difference in these two. So kind of look at these and uh, think about those red light, green light, uh, yellow lights in this. So here's the first one. What you'll notice a little bit of amplitude deduction here. You're gonna see a little bit of lack of rotation deduction there. But otherwise, it's not a terrible one. Now, let's take a look at the second one. To me, this is so picture perfect with everything, not only height, but counter rotation and extension. So here's a Ginger by Ginger. Here's a second one. I think it's just a little bit better. Once again, all we're focusing is on amplitude. Hips are definitely rising. Nice extension back. Now we get to a couple of straddle Jaegers. Not terribly bad, small deduction maybe. And watch the arms on the down drop, the bent arms on that on the down drop and trying to slow it down a little bit. Not bad. Now you see this was a little crunched in. So we have some execution errors and, and amplitude also. This one I think is one of the nicer ones. You can see the difference in the swing on that. And watch the hips continue to rise and the counter rotation there, which is so nice. And a couple other single bar releases here. Delchev, really nice. If you watch in slow motion, she does a nice job of it. Looks better in slow motion than it does in fast motion for me. Pike Jaeger. And the angle is really hard on this. I may have had a half a tenth on this one, depending on the angle, but um, it, it's a pretty nice looking one. And here we go, a hop. And I put the hop in there because you got to remember, this is also a release move. There should, should show some visible flight in that hop, not just a little squeeze hand around like that. Now talking about the bar to bar releases. Pack Salto. First one I think is absolutely beautiful. You see their hips are rising above the bar. There's definitely a stretch body position. She catches in support. Oh, different story there. You can see how quickly the change was. So I would say those hips are probably right at the level of the bar, not above it, but right level, but we have some body issues in, in addition. And I think that's absolutely beautiful also. I see a nice flight. So every time I see that, it's like, wow, <laughs> how pretty.
Oh, big difference there. I hope you can see that between the first and the second and the third and the fourth, a big difference between those, those pack saltos. This is a well done one also. Once again, she's not as high as that other one, but it's a pretty darn high pack salto. So look at Maloney's nice pop, beautiful hips up high and nice backswing. And I'll try to stop this on the uprise part. Uh, she's up there pretty nicely. And the backswing looks pretty nice too. The second version of it. So there we don't have quite the height or quite the backswing in addition to some of the other body position faults. And Maloney Haft is only one example of this and she does a pretty nice job of it. Once again, look for the legs, look for the extension on the half turn and that she has a nice clean swing. She has good flight here. And on Shaposhnikova here, we have an issue with some uh, height there on both sides. And on that side also. All right, so dismount and landings are two separate areas. So focusing on these dismounts, let's start with the double A. Not terribly bad. When, once again, we're not looking at this at the landings at all. We're looking at the body position, a small little air in body position. I'd have some amplitude deduction on this one because he's right at the level of the bar. Another thing I kind of look for is to see that the second salto is actually rising. You know, sometimes they come off and they rotate the same spot, they, you know, which is okay, just as long as the amplitude is up there. I thought a little better on height on this one. A little bit, once again, body position on the landing, but otherwise, height is still rising. Body position there. Now, the last one, you'll see one that actually rises a little bit more on the second. You see that rise? <laughs> Just absolutely gorgeous. Now, We have a couple of full ends. Very nicely done. I'd like to see a little more open up before the landing. The timing of the twist, I think, is up there. It's, she's rotating way above the bar. And I love this one for the opening part of the prior to land dance. So she did a very nice job of opening the body. I think the height was very comparable. But almost a full stretch before the landing, which and pretty nice landing positioning. I think there's a couple of full outs. Once again, it was a pretty nice pull out, a little bit on the landing opening and otherwise, and of course the landing itself, but 
she gets up there and I think she sits it down too quickly. So it causes her to kind of lose her balance there. And here's a second one. Not quite as high, but still much better positioning on, on the open. Not to mention her feet never came together or any of that stuff, you know. Now, double tucks, you still see these out of the giant foals. And here's one that, yikes. And then you get one that looks like this, which looks so effortless. The rotation looks effortless, the height is effortless, the open is effortless. Now look at this, she's still rising on her second soft O. And that's why she can open so beautifully. Double front. And once again, trajectory on these might be a little bit different. This one's a little bit too close to the bar, but it is a little bit different than the double backs. And then I think the last one we have is a double front with a half out. Done very nicely. You can't see the landing on that, so I'm going to pretend it was nailed. She's way up, way up on the second salto. Nice timing on the turn. Okay, so, you know, I said I wasn't going to talk about handstands or giants or that stuff, but I had to put one thing in here just on body position because we focus so much on short handstands and actually we didn't see a whole lot of short handstands in any of these 16 routines, but I did see some body position issues on a few of them. And I'm just pointing out what the line should be, look like, uh, not just the amplitude of the cast, but the body position when it's in the handstand. Beautiful line. If you drew a line straight from the toe straight down, you see that her, it splits her body just perfectly. Now this one is in handstand also within 10 degrees. But if you view that line, you see that the hips are kind of out, the belly's kind of pushed out, shoulders are a little pushed out. Here's the same thing here. We have a little bit different. Now we have an arch position from the shoulders. So we have to focus on that body also. It's so important. And another beautiful example. See, everything split evenly in half. All right, so it's time to practice judge. 